with over 250 characters currently in Marvel Strike Force and that number growing all the time, one of the biggest decisions to make on a daily basis is who are you going to use your limited resources to upgrade? So in this video, we are counting the best farmable targets that you should not skip. And if you're ready to see who makes the cut this month and their best T4 and ISO aid recommendations, along with some honorable mentions picks, then you know what to do, Valley Club. Find that like button and let's go smash it. And boom, welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I'm Valley Flying, and I hope you're having a great day. Now, if this is your first time here on the channel, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. At least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel with countdown videos like this, news videos, question and answer videos, gameplay videos, everything to help your experience in Marvel Strike Force. But today we are counting down the best characters in Marvel Strike Force. This is based more for mid game and end game players. If you are a newer player, I think your number one priority should be to get through the campaign nodes, three stars, many of those as possible. So you could farm your gear, farm your character shards. Also the challenges, three stars, many of those as possible and your flash event that pops up every week or so three star those as possible as many of those as possible once you do that then you should start focusing on other game modes and for me the most important game mode has always been arena because that is going to be your major source of power course which is going to help you in every single aspect of the game then the raids that is your major source of gear and it's something you're doing every single day so get your raid team solid then it's up to you if you want to focus on crucible or war the rewards aren't too great in either of those modes for me, I value Crucible a little bit more because that's a more fun game mode for me. But if you value War a little more, your list may look a little different. And if your list looks a little different than mine's, let me know in the comments. I do welcome some discussion on this. But let's take a look at the characters that are not eligible for this list because in one way or another, they're not farmable. And to be eligible for this list, they need to be able to be farmed on a node on a daily basis in a store either be a permanent legendary achievement character or login character. And this month we did add Quicksilver and big time Spider-Man to the eligible list. Quicksilver is obviously available from Crucible rewards and big time Spider-Man are obviously available from raid season rewards. But a lot of the best characters on the in the game not eligible for this list. Some of our newer legendary characters, Apocalypse, Super Scroll, our secret defenders not eligible for this list because they are not farmable right now. So let's clear this list off and see who got made newly eligible for this list. And there are three characters in Deathlock who just got added or since the last list got added to the arena store. Uh, Agent Venom went into the arena or Deathlock came out. Captain Carter went to the Crucible store. US Agent is in the raid store. And like I said earlier, Quicksilver and Big Time Spider-Man are now eligible. And we also have Union Jack and Titania going to the Hard Nexus chapter three and four next week. But as of me recording this, they are not there yet, so they are still not eligible. But it is time to start to count down for September of 2023. And coming in at a number 10 spot this month, dropping two spots from last month is Cersei. Very, very good character, part of this Eternal team, which was part of the arena meta for so long, and they were used in every single game mode for so long. They are losing value. Where Cersei is valuable right now is in Dark Dimension 6. If you have the gear for her, also very, very valuable in Cosmic Crucible, either on defense or on offense, and in war, that is where you're going to mainly use these characters. Let's go take a look at her kit, see why is she so valuable. And I, I have done all of these T4s because they're old value in Arena. If you are T4 starved and just building up Cersei, I think the two best moves for her is this passive here because it gets more max health for herself, Icarus, or focus for herself in Icarus. And her best move is probably this ultimate where you're going to do a big AOE attack, you're applying speed up, you're generating ability energy for herself, and Icarus, which means that you could do this ultimate more and more and more. So she still is a very good character, just not used in as many game modes as she was in the past. But if you want to farm Cersei, she's available on the Hard Villains campaign, chapter 2-9. And as far as the best ISO 8 for Cersei, 69% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have the skirmisher attached to Cersei. Moving on with the list, coming at the number 9 spot is the partner in crime for Cersei, Icarus. I'm going to get a number 9 spot. Now... You could flip the flop these two characters. I usually pair these two together and in a pair of the Eternals, Icarus is probably the more valuable character. But if you're using that standalone character, Cersei is probably a little more value. And just like Cersei, losing value, the Eternals were all over the place, but now not as valuable. But if you have a lot of that astral energy, you've already built up Apocalypse, don't know who to use it on, you can use that astral energy. Take Icarus into Dark Dimension 6. Also, just like Cersei, very, very valuable in Cosmic Crucible. 
and in war. Let's go take a look at the kid of Icarus and see why he is such a beast still in the game. As we take a look at all these uh, T4s, I've done all of them because of the old arena meta, but I think his biggest move right here is gonna be his ultimate. The T4, it only does more damage on attacks and it flips the positive effects to negative effects if Cersei is an ally, so this move is not as valuable if Cersei is not on a team, but I like this because of the double ping. If an enemy dies, you're gonna do this attack again, 300% more damage. And this is also a nice passive because it helps Cersei and Icarus, but as far as armor resistance, not the most valuable stats, but it does help both of them. So it's a good T4 to invest in. And as far as where you can farm Icarus, well, he is available in the raid store, so you need to have that rotation for him to pop up. And as far as the best ISO A class for Icarus, 82% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have that Striker class attached to Icarus. Moving on with the list, moving on with the countdown, coming at number eight, falling five spots from last month, is the OG version of Captain America. Still a very good character, still part of that Rebirth team, so you're gonna need him in the current raids. Uh, also, this Rebirth team can be very, very tricky on defense in Cosmic Crucible, can be very tricky on defense in War. Uh, let's go take a look at the Captain America kit, see why he is still such a valuable character, even after all these years. This was a launch character, and I think the best move for Captain America is gonna be his passive here. Does a lot, but what the T4 does Gaining taunt for two turns when a, a rebirth ally drops below 50% max health. That is going to help them to survive. Gaining more bonuses in war, more health in war, more health in the raids. This is going to help the uh, this is going to help the entire team with their survivability because Captain America is that tank that you have to get through before he could do anything. Now, the most popular class on MarvelStrikeForce.com of ISO 8 for Captain America is Fortifier, with 45% of users having that class attached to them. Although Healer. 32% of users have healer attached to them, so that is also a very good class. And if you want to farm Captain America, he's available on Nexus 1-3. Moving on to the number seven spot in the list. Moving down one spot from last month is Brother Loki. Very valuable part of that Bifrost team in the raids also because he's a Bifrost character. A lot of people are using the Bifrost team in room two of Cosmic Crucible in this current season, which is very, very tricky. So... Gives a lot of value. I would say he's the least valuable member of this Bifrost team, but that doesn't mean he's a bad character at all. Uh, he is the only farmable member, so he does make the list kind of by default. As far as the T4s for Loki, passive, I think, is the best one because in a raise when his character Aura as Guardian ally drops below 50% health, he's gonna have three evades and three death proofs to that character, so really, really helps that survivability especially in the raids, especially in that room in Cosmic Crucible where the road bonuses are active. And as far as the best ISO 8 class for Loki, Skirmisher is the most popular class. 58% of users have Skirmisher attached him to Loki. And if you want to farm him, he is available in the raid store. And in the number six spot this month, dropping four spots from last month is Nick Fury. And he didn't drop four spots because he got worse some other characters just got a lot better and got a lot more important but nick fury is needed in the incursion raids right now part of that invader team also very very good in cosmic crucible very good in war more as a hybrid character i don't think the invaders shine in that mode so you're probably using them on some hybrid teams usually using that special in cosmic crucible and war to get ahead of your opponents and let's go take a look at his kit see why he is such a great character well, I think the thing that makes him a great character is this passive here. Although I don't know if you need that T4, if you really T4 start. I think what you want to do, if you are limited on T4s, is this ultimate here, where instead of summoning two to three shield agents, you're gonna summon three shield agents. So you may have good RNG with it at level six and this T4 does nothing, but getting that guarantee of three shield agents instead of the possibility of two, I think this makes it a great, uh, great, great move. Now, as far as Nick Fury, well, you need to farm some dirty, ugly, trashy cream minions to get him. But once you have them done, you don't have to worry about those cream minions at all. He is that permanent legendary that is there all the time. There's a couple different classes that are very popular for Nick Fury. Healer is the most popular with 44% of users with healer class attached to Nick Fury. But Raider seems to be a very good class on an invader team with 25% of users having Raider attached to Nick Fury. Moving on with the list, coming at number five this month is a new character on the list, Captain Carter. Yes, yeah, she is a very, very good character. Important part of the Rebirth team and her being made farmable is kind of why Captain America drops so much 
this month. Captain Carter, I think, is the more valuable member of the team. Although Captain America, especially in the raids, especially in Cosmic Crucible, is pretty much just as valuable. But you're using Captain Carter the same place you're using Captain America for this rebirth team. Obviously the raids, but also very good in Cosmic Crucible, also very good in War. Let's go take a look at her kit and see what are some of the best T4s that you could equip on her. She has a very, very good kit. I do like this special for the raids, though. Reviving a rebirth ally instead of 30% health, 60% health. But I think the best move is going to be this AUA attack. It's only a three-turn cooldown, so you could use this multiple times per match. 100% damage on an AOA attack is strong. Safeguard for two turns for self and rebirth allies only in the raids or in that Cosmic Crucible room where the re raid bonuses are active. I think the best T4, though, is going to be this passive here where in the raids when a character or a rebirth ally drops below 30% max health, heal this that character for 30% of this character's max health. So uh, healing, very, very good. And a lot of other stuff on this passive. Very good character. And if you want a farmer, she is available in the Crucible store. So you need to pop up through that rotation. And as far as the best class for her, well, healer seems to be the most popular class. 72% of users have healer attached to Captain Carter. Moving on to the number four spot on this list, moving up one spot from last month is Magneto, another permanent legendary on this list. Very, very good in the raids as part of that Death Sea team. Very good in Cosmic Crucible and War as part of the Death Sea team as well. And because they are a horseman team, you do need Magneto in order to unlock Apocalypse. So it needs a little bit of value on this list because of that. Uh, let's go take a look at that Magneto kit. Very, very valuable in the raids and Cosmic Crucible. But do you need a lot of these T4s? I think I do like these T4s as well, especially if you're using them to attack a team in room two. Applying ability to block for two turns. This will apply to any rooms in Cosmic Crucible where raid bonuses are active. This ultimate is very, very good, but the T4 only does 30% damage to primary adjacent targets. I think the big one is going to be this passive, though. So on the raids, uh, he's going to get more ability energy, which means that every single time you enter the raids with a death seed, he is starting with uh, this ultimate on turn one. Without that passive, he's not going to start with the ultimate on turn one uh, if you have your cooldowns not set up properly. Now, Magneto, like I said, he is a permanent legendary character. You're going to need your mutants to unlock him. And as far as the most popular ISO 8 classes, it is Raider on a non death seed team. But for me, I'm using Striker and Skirmisher, flip flopping between what I'm trying to do in Cosmic Crucible. I don't think it matters too much in the raids because we're just kind of smashing through Sim, but Striker, 30% of users have Striker on him. If I need an extra Skirmisher, like I'm trying to ability block a Sylvie in room two, that is when I switch him to Skirmisher and uh, he gets that extra focus to make sure he gets that ability block on Sylvie. Moving on to number three this month, also moving up one spot, and it is another member of the Death Sea team, Dark Beast coming in at number three. Now, just like the rest of the Dead Sea team, very, very good in the raids, very good in Cosmic Crucible, very good in war. And as far as Dark Beast, well, it mainly his value is going to come from his ability to clone a primary target and regenerate, uh, revive a dead Death Sea ally. This is an awesome special. As a long cooldown, so I don't know if you need to T4 this. I do like the ultimate, especially for the raids and especially for Cosmic Crucible. Ability to block for two turns to the primary target. This will affect characters like Val or anyone else that you're simming in the raids. But I think the best T4 is this Dark Doctor, uh, the passive on turn, flipping a positive effect to a negative effect on a non summon enemy with the highest speed. And in raids, you're doing that with three positive effects and also a 50% chance to blind that enemy. So I think that's a great T4. And as far as where you could farm Dark Beast, well, he's on a Nexus hard chapter 2 9. And as far as the best ISO 8 class for him, Skirmisher seems to be the most popular class with 76% of users with Skirmisher attached. Although Healer is gaining a little bit more popularity, 11% of users have Healer attached to Dark Beast. At number two this month, dropping one spot from last month is Nemesis. This guy has been at the number one spot for a few months now. Dropped this month, not because of anything that he did, but we had a new character that was added to this list. Now, just like the rest of the Death Seed characters, Dark Beast, Magneto, he's going to be a val a val very, very valuable in the raids, Cosmic Crucible, and War. However, Nemesis is a character that you might want to consider for Dark Dimension 6 because a lot of his attacks is based on stealing health from the enemies, a percent of the enemy's health, which means that in Dark Dimension 6, with those high health pools, he's going to be stealing a lot of health, redistributing it. 
as well. So very, very good character. Let's take a look at why he is such an important character. I think his best move is this ultimate. It is an AoE attack, stealing 10% of health from each target, redistributing itself and all allies. This is not tied to the raids. This is not just tied to Death Siege. So this is a strong move. You're also stealing 10% of health with a T4 on this special as well. So I think I would do both of those. But I think the best move as far as the raids in Cosmic Crucible is going to be the passive. More damage to self, more damage to Death Seed allies. And I think you have a strong case for doing the passive, special, and ultimate on Nemesis. Especially if this is a Dark Dimension character for you. Uh, he is available in the Crucible stores. So just like Captain Carter, you have to wait for him to, to go through that rotation. And as far as ISO 8 classes, 74% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have Striker attached to Nemesis. Moving on with the final spot of this list. And this character kind of gets this spot by default because this is the only character on this list that is sort of used in arena right now and that is quicksilver so i'm not particularly using him in my shard i don't see him on defense in my shard but there's a lot of people that use him on a daily basis in arena offense and defense and for that reason alone he is on the top spot in this list just because of his uh value in that game mode but also very very good character for in dark dimension six if you could afford to use that mystic gear because he's an expensive character but he will smash in dark dimension six but where he's really shining nowadays is cosmic crucible and in war let's go take a look at the kit of quicksilver why he is such a strong character and you got to you can make the argument you could t for every single move of his because it has value more damage more piercing damage always applying disrupted on the basic here the special clearing negative effects on this character 300 percent more damage to the primary target does have a long cooldown though uh you have an even longer cooldown on his ultimate uh very very good move clearing all negative effects on this character more piercing damage to all enemies and this is a strong strong passive does a lot but as far as what the t4 does on turn of charge he's going to fill speed bar for self for 20 percent and an ally turn always gaining a random positive effect this character is very very strong making a difference now in arena and all obviously in crucible and war and the good thing about quicksilver you don't even need to use resources to get shards for him he's going to be included in your cosmic crucible rewards every single week so you don't have to use campaign energy or any store currency to get him you're just going to get shards for quicksilver and then you could use your resources as you want to build them up for either arena cosmic crucible dark dimension war whatever uh he's just just get the shards for him now as far as the best iso 8 class it is pretty overwhelmingly 80 percent striker on quicksilver does very very good with that iso 8 class giving him the extra pings this basic is what makes that uh striker class such a strong move on him and that's it for the top 10 but now it's time to briefly mention some honorable mention characters the first one i always have to mention is nobu a character that is so good even when he's dead his passive can still bring characters back to life also some rebirth characters that are farmable winter soldier u.s agent you're gonna need them we also have some horsemen characters or at least apocalypse unlock characters in psylocke wong scarlet witch heartless agatha hulk abomination show shield phantom x dazzler all characters that you're gonna need especially if you don't have apocalypse unlocked uh you're gonna need to build them and another character that i do want to mention as far as honorable mention is hella very fun character in crucible very fun character in war and just a very fun team in general let me know what you think of this list did you agree did you disagree maybe you have some valuation of these game modes a little different than i do so let me know your list in the comments down below thanks for watching all the way to the end if you enjoy this video hit that like button it is free for you it helps out the channel immensely and if you want to see what are the best teams to build right now in marvel strike force ranking them from best to worst make sure you check out the video up there and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching hulk fist bump valley blind out.